everyone, welcome back. Um, I wanted to walk you through a little bit of a process that I did in the last few weeks, um, which is bringing in my fiddle leaf figs and my philodendron psyllium from my back porch. Um, I started by rinsing off my fiddle leaf fig. Uh, my philodendron psyllium back there will be next. These are the only uh, plants, my house plants, that I actually had outside. Um, and once it was done, the fiddle leaf figs, I decided what I was going to do was repot them. And you can see I had some plastic pots back there, but after what happened with that Monstera, I decided I was gonna put them into terracotta instead. Um, because definitely the thing with the plastic pot is that you can have mold start to develop. It's not, it doesn't really breathe. And then of course you're at risk of root rot. So this fiddle leaf fig was actually two plants um, in one pot and so what I did is I just you know took it out it actually could have been a lot worse um, in terms of the roots they actually they weren't too bad um, and you can see me just trying to kind of figure out here how they connect and what the best way to kind of get them separated would be because I, I decided that I did want to have them separated I didn't want them um, next to each other anymore and so all in all, I have three fiddle leaf figs. Um, I have two that were in that one pot and then I have one that was in its own pot. Um, and so I decided, you know, it's just time. This is the single one here that's still in a pot that you can see down, down there um, on the ground. Uh, but I decided it was time to separate the two that were in the same pot and it actually went really well. I got all three of them into their own pots. Uh, they're really happy, they've adjusted well, so they've come inside and they're doing pretty good. I'm really, I'm really pleased. Uh, again, I waited really late to repot them, but after what I went through with that Monstera, I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna repot these plants and let what happens happen. Um, and they've adjusted really well. They are in this window that you can see. It's a large sliding glass door actually. And I have some succulents actually on the other side of this that you might be able to see. And uh, they get a lot of direct early morning light and uh, it's, it's been a good place for them. Here is my philodendron cellum. Um, you can see I've already got my, my stucco nice and dirty spraying things around here. And one of the things I noticed with my salum this year uh, being outside is that it really grew a lot of these aerial roots, just a tremendous amount. It didn't really have any to speak of until this summer it went outside and then suddenly I've got all of these, you know, roots that are really hanging down. Um, I think that my dog might have chewed on one, to be honest with you but learned really quickly to leave the plants alone and she's been really good about leaving them alone. So I decided, you know, the first thing I wanted to do was to get rid of this yellow leaf and uh, remove that. And then I would start washing the saloon uh, in preparation for bringing it in. Last year when I brought it in, I did actually soak it in a tub with water. That way any of the pests that potentially would be uh, in the plant would then sort of you know rise up and flow out however this year you know last year i really didn't find much and so i decided this year i was just going to go ahead and give it a thorough washing and that way i can make sure that if anything has gotten on the leaves uh, i can definitely knock that off with some water and other than that i have been treating them with uh, a neem oil everything that's been outside and other than that, I, I really feel like it'll be fine. I'm not too concerned. It's just really making sure that I get the front and the back of the leaves, like every single leaf that's here, as well as give it a really good thorough watering just so I can get it uh, situated and get it to where the, you know, I feel like it's definitely been moist, you know, it's got enough moisture coming into the house because it is gonna be a change when my plants are on the patio, they get probably quite a bit more water because I can just let them, you know, drain out here on the concrete, no problem. 
However, once they get into the house, I think that they do get less water. And you know, when it's over winter, that's, I think that that's probably a good idea. They really don't need as much. They're definitely not growing as fast, but look at these aerial roots. I am just blown away by these. And I really like them actually. Uh, one of the things that I'm thinking about though with the Salum is I'm wondering how many more years I'm gonna be able to bring it out here and then take it back inside for the winter. Because frankly, it's getting bigger and bigger and I'm not sure, you know, at this point in, in the area that I live in, a philodendron Salum that's this established, if you transplanted it in the spring, it would survive all year round outdoors here. Um, I am in zone 9B and so it does, we do get, it does get cold, but I could protect this plant in the ground and keep it from freezing. So I've, I'm trying to think about that. Here is where my dog did chew. You, you did that, didn't you? There's the culprit. Yeah, keep walking. Um, like I said, however, the dog has learned to leave the plants alone, thankfully. Um, but I, yeah, I'm kind of feeling a little bit witzful maybe a little it's a little bittersweet because I'm not sure if I'll be doing this again or if you know come spring maybe uh, I take the salum and I put it in the ground and uh, you know let it go from being an indoor plant to an outdoor plant uh, it would definitely be happening happening a little bit sooner than I had anticipated but it's all right you know um, I, I've thought about repotting this actually as well but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, top it off with some more potting soil and definitely give it some more worm castings, uh, getting it nice and settled in the house, but I don't think I'm going to repot it. But if I don't put it in the ground in the spring, it is absolutely gonna have to be repotted. So it's, it's something I'm still thinking about and deciding, and I'm sure having it in the house this winter, I'll, I'll get a better sense of what I think it needs and how long maybe it's got left in the house. However, it's a gorgeous plant. The shape of the leaves are beautiful and the salum, they're huge. And once I got it inside, look at this, just beautiful. I am so happy with it. It's on um, a breakfast table that I have and uh, I used one of the plant stands that I got from Home Goods uh, on top of the table. And I ended up just really liking it. Um, the colors probably of the, the plant stand aren't the best for what's around it. I do have some of my fall and sort of Halloween decorations out already. And I've used its aerial, aerial roots to kind of wrap around some of these pumpkins. Um, but however, yeah, I'm just, I am really happy with it overall. It's, when I got it, it was, <laughs> It was so small and to see it like this is just really satisfying um, and it's a huge statement plant where it is it's so tall especially with the additional height from that stand that it's one of the first things you see when you come into the room and I don't have a ton of plants like that I would say my fiddle leaf figs my philodendron salum and that newer monstera that I have are kind of the larger plants that are in my space that are kind of my statement plants uh, however, most of my plants, as, as you know, if you watch my channel, are um, calatheas, and so not quite as big, but incredibly striking, if I do say so myself. However, I hope that you liked this video, that you enjoyed watching my plants come inside for the winter, or fall, I should say. Uh, until next time, be well, and take care. Mm -hmm.